Hey guys, Kurt from Time Machine Transport. My wife's out here helping me right now. Um, so, our truck was finished with the motor. And I left out yesterday to, um, to pick up a load out of Fox Lake, Wisconsin, going to Phoenix, Arizona. Home Depot trailer, street dropper. But you know, I got this extension cord running up into my power inverter for my fridge because I got food in there and I don't want it to go bad so anyways uh I'm gonna go over a couple things so I the truck got it ran great got everything fired up um painted her up I mean she started really really nice um hold on one second put, this hood. Oh, shit. put you on pause hold on all right so truck got it all all put back together all fired up she ran great um i took her for a test drive around the industrial park now this truck's got a new head new new uh, injector cups new injectors um new turbo new uh hose that goes from the turbo into the into the air intake and I was about six miles from the shop yesterday uh, afternoon and the truck died dead in the water um, I had a clutch um, issue uh, there was a uh, my beautiful wife hi there was a uh, it wasn't the spring for the clutch, but it was a rod that attaches the clutch to the transmission. The bushings on it were bad. So we thought that was a problem with the fire it up. And it just wouldn't start. So I'm getting a lot of blow-by underneath the truck. If you don't know what blow-by is, it comes out of that, that hose down there underneath the truck. And the other end goes into your valve cover. Valve cover on uh, this side. And it's uh, it's it, it's used for a blow by is for uh, it's for uh, the engine can't hold just exact pressure it'll just blow up like a balloon so it's like a vent almost but anyways I'm getting a lot of white blow by so my wife came out here with me at the shop because I'm thinking it might be the ECM so I, I was looking at some forms today and reading this and watching this talk to a bunch of mechanics and. I'm thinking that, um, put my boost sensor in. Anyways, I'm thinking, well, I was told by the guy who came out to fix the clutch issue on the road, um, he said, uh, oh, your pistons might be shot. Well, the pistons and the liners look good on this truck. You can look back on my videos. However, when I was talking to the mechanics, we all came to the same agreement. I'm like, even if you have a bad piston, or I mean, I'm one one guy said shit. Even if you had all six bad pistons, the trucks would still fire. It would run, it would run like shit. But um, yeah, I am running off road diesel because the truck, the gas station here only had off road diesel, and I needed to put some kind of fuel in my truck or I'd run out. So, anyways, um, but they all agreed. It, it, only the one mechanic said shit. Even if you had six bad pistons, the truck would still still start. What's happening is she's, oh, don't tell me I left my damn Kia at the house. Anyways, I'm going to put you on pause. I'm going to try to crank it. It it cranks, but it just doesn't turn over. So my wife's out here. I'm going to pull the, pull the air cleaner out, and we're going to shoot starter fluid in there. And I'm going to see if the truck starts, then it's something internal. So... I did the video with Jesus, a mechanic that helped me for a day fix that camshaft, and I was wondering maybe if the dowel pin or the camshaft failed, but we're, I'm going to kind of do a process of elimination because the truck is just cranking, but it's not turning. It's just like, rrr, 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 and it's it's nothing. I got fuel pressure. I don't have any air in the system. I don't know what's going on. She ran like a top. Uh, you know, I idled her, she started, everything was great. So we're going to do a process of elimination. So I want to do a video on it. I'm going to go get the starter fluid. And then uh, I'm going to grab my key. And uh, we're going to see if this girl starts. All right, guys, we got it started. We got it started. That's off the news. My wife is going to eat their bowl.
So she started, so that's a great thing. So why well, I did this video was a process of elimination. So that's a great thing. That means that she started and that is a great, oh, I'm so relieved. I am so relieved that she started. So, like I said earlier in the video, yeah, it's dark out, so we just got out here just before it was getting dark, but before the, um, yeah, the batteries, and so we put our, our battery charger in the truck on, and I got another spare battery on the other side hooked up with cables, but she started, and that's the reason why I'm doing this video. If you have a truck that has all this new stuff on it, like we just did, then if it just won't if, if she was cranking she was cranking basically essentially she was going like this like that so if you're getting crank like that it's not going to be a battery issue or a power issue so that's why you go to your air filter and spray starting fluid in it that right there was a the process of elimination because the service tech that came out when I when uh, the truck died on the side of the road, uh, the service tech's like, because I had that blow-by, that white blow-by, and uh, I'll, I'll go over what, what we did now, seeing that it started. So uh, I had him, so when the tech comes out, he fixes the clutch pedal thing, and we go to start it, and he's like, dude, uh, I think um, I think your pistons are bad in the truck. He said because you got like a lot of blow by on the other side, blah blah blah. And I'm like, dude, it should still start. He's like, I don't know. And I was like, well, it should still start. Like I said, I talked to like four or five mechanics today on the phone. I read all these forms. I looked on YouTube. Nobody's doing a video like this on it. And um, so when it, the mechanics I talked to, they were all like, well, fuel pressure. I'm like. No, no, no. I said, I, I can eliminate that. I said, but I'm just asking, what, what's your opinion on, you know, the truck not starting? And I, and I told him about what the service tech said about it maybe being a bad piston or whatever. And he goes, well, yeah, it could be. I'm like, yeah, but it would still start, right? And he's like, they're all, every one of them agreed, except, for, and the one said, even if you had six bad pistons, it would still start. So then I looked on this one video, Adept Ape, and he's a Caterpillar mechanic. Well, they had the exact same situation where they pulled the truck into their shop. It ran perfect. Like this one, ran, I was going to do a video right after, she, right after she started, and I'll show you guys. Like, man, it was running top notch, man. She had a lot of power. She was idling great. No smoke, no nothing. And uh, so they had the exact same thing. They pulled the truck into their shop, and they were doing some work on it. When the work was done, they went to start it, and it was dead. It would not start. It cranked, but it did not start. So they went ahead and they were, you know, they're obviously experienced mechanics. I'm not. And they assumed that they, it was either the, so on the Detroit, this is Detroit 60 series. So right up here behind the compressor, you can't see it, but it's in a tight spot. It's all the way down there. I can't show you it. I can show you what the old sensors look like. But on the gear case, on the back of your gear case, Right behind the compressor is a sensor, and I think that might be the camshaft sensor or the crankshaft sha crankshaft sensor, I'm not sure. Um, they, they look similar to each other. One's longer than the other one. So anyways, I had a dis, I was here last night, so I had the, 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 the tow company tow us to our shop because it was either six miles to their shop, and they said if they couldn't do the work, they were gonna have to tow the truck out to West Bend for another $750 fee or that's if they couldn't do the work at their shop. And the kids said that's probably, they probably won't be able to do it there, but they won't be able to look at your truck until like late afternoon or early afternoon today. So I was like, and then after I looked at Adept Apes video where they said it was, it was one of two sensors, either the camshaft sensor or the crankshaft sensor. And I just showed you where the one is behind the, the computer. And the other one is right down there you can see where I have RTV. So I had I had a kid, Cody Alexander. I know you watched the videos, brother, but you didn't know. He uh, he actually broke the bolt off inside the block. Or, yeah, on the, uh, actually, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, I think it goes on the block. So that, actually, I think the bottom one that goes into the block is the crankshaft sensor. It's on the bottom. 
And then your camshaft, I think, is on the top. Did I mention that? Did I think that that was the, the camshaft? Anyways, so right down there on the block, I don't know if you can see it. It's got the RTV. Yeah, right there where the RTV silicone is. I didn't, I'm not going to, I didn't have time to extract the bolt. So I just went ahead and RTV'd it in there after I pulled it. That was, that's the easier of the two. It's just one 13 millimeter nut. Our bolt, and then the one up here behind the computers or behind the compressor is also a 13 millimeter. So, anyways, I had them told me to shop here last or early evening last night, and I went ahead and figured, well, it might just be the one of the two sensors because Adept Dave said that they ohmed it out, and one was good, the other one was kind of erratic or very erratic, so they changed them both, anyways. And uh, I guess there's a you know, here I'll show you what the sensors look like if I still have them. So. And I was going to do a video last night, but it was pouring rain. The truck's obviously outside. And so the tips on these are magnetic, believe it or not. And I don't know. I, I think it's something with the, the rotation of the gears or something or whatever. But anyway, so I went ahead and changed them out. As you can see, they're two different sensors. One's longer than the other one. I think this was the top one behind the compressor, and this was the crankshaft on the bottom. So anyways, I went ahead, it didn't look like anything was obstructing the magnet. I guess they say that's what happens is debris gets on these magnet ends and that's what uh, gives them erratic or they just go bad. So after I did sitting out here in the pouring rain last night, um, hi Sarah, hi. Um, I went to start the truck and nothing. So anyways, I wanted to do a video because when I, like I said, when I talked to the mechanics, they all agreed that the truck with a bad piston should still start, regardless, should still start. So now it's going to be, I'm going to, in that, in this Kenworth over here, we have a, uh, a Detroit 60 in it. <clears throat> now I did a video a couple years ago on the ECM, what did I do with that, uh, Flash I, do. I did a video on an e how to how to diagnose or, or change your ease or the problem I was having my fan was staying on end up being a broken wire on the um, on the last on, on the wire harness there was I had a gorilla mechanic here Greg Horsefall that piece of garbage he uh, put in the starter and broke the Broke the wire way in the back, and he tried, instead of doing the right thing, pulling it out and splicing it, he tried to do it back there. Anyway, so I thought it was a broken wire, but I put a new harness in. So the ECM is down there. I pulled that ECM a couple years ago, and I sent it to a company. What you do is you go on on uh, eBay, and you buy the subscription for 650 bucks. As soon as the subscription is paid for, they email you a shipping label. You put it in a box. You ship it down to them in Texas. It's a couple-day turnaround they ship it back to you and then the good part about this is if if you still own the truck while you still own it you can send that ecm back down to texas and they fix it for free so that's uh the name of the company is like ecm something or other so if you need the number uh you can call me at 414-477-7845 again that's 414-477-7845 so now the plan is, being that it started, I know it's not a, a motor problem. It might be a fuel problem. Um, I mean, the fuel did suck down. I mean, it was up here. I changed the filter last night thinking that might be it, but it sucked down pretty good. So anyways, it could be, a, and I put a brand new fuel pump in here as well. It's brand new. Um, but like I said, the truck ran drove great until i got it out six miles from the shop and then she died so now it's i know it's not the motor which is a great thing now the second thing i'm going to do is in that truck we have a detroit 60 with the exact same ecm so i'm going to pull that because that, that truck starts i got to pull the ecm in that anyways um to get it fixed because it, there's it's it's not reading the odometer's not working the speedometer's not working nothing so the lights and everything else work except it so now i'm going to pull that ecm tomorrow i'm going to put it in this truck and see if it starts if it does start then i know it's the ecm 
If it doesn't start, because like I said, that truck starts. If it doesn't start, then I know it's got to be something internal. Maybe, like I said, is it the is it the dowel pin on the camshaft? Um, is it uh, which I don't think that would be it. Is it an injector problem? Uh, the mechanic I had, Jesus, to help me for the day. Maybe he didn't put them in right, whatever. So now this is a great thing. So it starts, now I can go from here. I know it's not the motor. I know it's something else. So anyways, I just wanted to do a video on it in case you guys are having an exact same problem. Um, and that's it. So wish us luck. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Ciao.